Hi, welcome everybody. This is Create with Decoupage. My name is Amber Gagliardi. I'm a librarian at the Middle Country Public Library, and you're joining me in my craft studio today. So welcome. Um, I was here last, a couple weeks ago, and I showed you a similar decoupage project with a planter. So I know a lot of people enjoyed that. So I figured I'd come back and show you some more projects today. So we're going to get started. Um, before we um, get, dive into our projects, I just wanted to go over some of the materials that I'll be using. So um, here at my table, I have a Mod Podge. Uh, this is essential for um, doing decoupage, but there's also other brands out there. So I happen to be familiar with this brand, so this is what I'll be demonstrated on today. This is a gloss uh, finish, so that's what I've used for these projects, but there's other finishes out there, so feel free to use those. I'll also be using some basic materials such as a pencil, uh, scissors, my paper cutter that's right here. Um, that's nice for doing nice straight lines. And uh, a paintbrush and some acrylic paint. So those are some basic materials. And I'm going to be showing you how to make a frame, a crate, and a jewelry holder, but really whatever wood you have laying around, or, you know, we did the tin can last week, so you can use any of those to do a decoupage project. So this is kind of to give you some ideas, and I'll be talking about those materials as we go along, but really the possibilities are endless. So uh, let's get started. So our first project here is a wooden frame. So this is one that's finished here, and I started this one as well. So let's go through the steps. So the first thing you want to do is take your wooden, your wooden frame and um, take it out of the packaging, which I've already done, and you are going to take your paper. So I'm using a scrap of paper. Um, you would want to stay away from a cardstock because it's just too heavy to use for a decoupage project. So a scrapbook, a lightweight scrapbook uh, paper is great. You can also use a napkin or some scrap paper or a magazine or whatever you have. But I'm going to be using some pretty scrapbook paper today. So what I'm going to do is um, trace my frame. I find that for this particular project, this is a little bit easier. So I'm just going to go ahead and go around the frame here. And I'm doing it on the back of my paper so I don't get any pencil marks on the frame itself. And then this frame that I'm using has an inside, so I'm going to go ahead and that as well. And I'm just going to use a pair of scissors and And I'm just cutting along the lines that I drew. Now this, you really want to take your time with this part because for me, I like it to have a nice crisp look to it. So I don't want any jagged edges for this particular project I'm doing. So I'm just going around. And the inside part is a little bit trickier, so I have a little trick. I'm just going to grab a piece of scrap wood, and I have this new tool that I got recently. This was made by Cricut. It's just a blade. Um, it comes in this kit. I'm going to use this for several projects, but you can really use other things, but I highly recommend this. This is called Cricut True Control Kit, and it has some blades, um, so I find this to be really handy but you can certainly just use your scissors as well. 
And I'm just cutting the inside now. My scissors here just to get it out. Here we go. So you can see now I have it in the same shape as my frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Mod Podge and a paintbrush. This is a one inch paintbrush I'm using here. And I am going to go ahead and paint my frame. So the key to any decoupage project is to make sure you get a nice layer of your day, of your uh, Mod Podge on your frame. But you don't want it to be too much where it's wet and then saturates your paper. So it's a nice balance. So take your time with this part. And and cover the entire frame. Okay, so I got a nice layer on. Just gonna give it a moment to dry so it's not wet. And then you're going to take your paper and cover it and make sure it lines up. So you want to make sure there's no bubbles in your project. So I'm just using a tool that Cricut makes to flatten it. But you could use a credit card, a library card, or whatever you have handy to smooth out. What I'm doing now. I'm finding that this part is coming up, so you can go ahead. If that happens to you, you can just reapply it. So pretty simple. Make sure it dries. And make sure my paper is really smooth. And this is where my tool is going to come in handy. I was kind of rushing to cut this, so I'm just going to use it to kind of trim up my edge here. So I'm going to do that. But you could also take a pair of scissors and kind of just straighten out. Like that. If you have any part that's sticking out that you don't like, or you just were a little bit off on in your cutting. OK. so. This is drying. So now we, what you'll do next is you'll take your Mod Podge and put your top layer on. So same idea. You want to make sure it's nice and smooth. Nice even strokes you can do. So good. And cover the entire frame. I would recommend it, recommend doing two layers. So you can go ahead and do one. Uh, you'll want to let it dry. And then do your second layer. 
So I'll put that right here, allow that to dry. And I have one that I've already did earlier and it's dry. So what's kind of nice about this is you, you put a sealer on it, you put a top coat on it. So if you did decide to paint second, um, which you can do, if you do accidentally go on the front of your frame, you could just take a paper towel or your finger and wipe it off. So um, I'm just gonna take, I have this nice yellow um, color I used here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take it. You can just cover the edge to give it a nice finished look. So I thought the yellow would go nicely with it. So you can just go down and cover it and go all the way around. So then when it's on the wall or if you have it on your table, you know, you have it on the counter or a table, you can see that the top is finished too. So that gives it a nice finished look. And you can see that I accidentally um, did some paint here and it easily wipes right off because you have the top finish on. So that's a nice little protection for your thing. So there's that. Put this over here to dry. I'm gonna finish going around the whole frame later. So the next project I'm gonna show you, I have one complete here. This is a, um, a crate. A wooden crate. You find these everywhere. You, like, you pretty much can find them at any craft store. Um, I got these at Michael's. They're the smaller crates, which is nice if you have a craft room and you want to put some of the mason jars in it or you're looking to organize. Um, they're pretty plain, so I think it's really nice to add um, some decoupage to it so it just brightens up the space. So for me, I'm going to have two matching frames here. So what I so let's go ahead and switch. So for this particular project, I'm gonna use the same um, materials that I did for the frame. I'm gonna use the Mod Podge. I'm gonna use a um, a pencil, scissors, all that. I am not going to paint this. So this is just going to be a very simple project. Um, so when you do a crate, it does have quite a few, um, you know, lines to cut. So what I did is I used my Cricut machine to pre-cut the lines. Um, I'm not the best at, you know, cutting straight lines, and I wanted to do a few of these. So I found that the Cricut machine was really helpful for this. If you do have a Cricut machine and you have any questions about how I did that, feel free to send me an email or let me know in the chat and I could give you some hints on how to do this. But um, I am going to go ahead. So this was cut on already. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those pieces from my mat. And if you've ever used the Cricut before, the, the, the key to doing projects on it is really to make sure you take your time when lifting the project up. So this is where this tool is pretty helpful. But again, you could always use a credit card or some other method of removing it. So I did a, I used a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper to do this. Again, it's just basic scrapbook paper. Amber? Yeah. I have a question from YouTube. Okay. Um, somebody watching would like to know what weight of paper is best. Is it better to use a thicker paper, a thinner paper? Yeah, so it's definitely better to use a light a lighter paper. So this is just a basic scrapbook paper that came in a set. Um, if you use a heavier cardstock, it's it's not going to be ideal for decoupage. Um, 
Um, I'm just free moving. So I will actually need all of these to finish this crate. So you can see that my paper is curling. That is going to be just fine because we're going to glue it down and it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put my mat back. Okay, so now here's the crate. Uh, same idea. You are going to take your Mod Podge and you are going to completely cover it. And So you can see here, I'm just covering. Now this is, I, I really do um, think this is a, a really fun project. The crates, there's so much you can do with it. I mentioned you can do them for yourself, but um, you know, for a, wedding I had, I went ahead and made one of these and what I did is I covered it in a piece of scrapbook or a scrapbook paper and then I filled it with a bunch of um, you know products that I thought my friend would like. So it was great. It, it, you know it made it personal and it was it was nice to give that to them. So um, you can kind of think of some of those ideas as well. So again um, I applied a, a thin layer. Um, so it's not too wet, but I made sure I covered the entire thing so it was thick. So the crate your, is going to be longer than your paper itself. So I'm going to have to cut some of my scrapbook pieces of paper that I have. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my longest pieces on. And again, I'm just going to smooth this out. And I'm going to take another piece back. Amber, I have another question on YouTube. Okay follow-up um, this person is asking if they can decoupage on other things aside from the wood yeah absolutely like last week we did the the tin can so that's definitely possible um, I'm trying to think of some other so I mainly have done wood um, and the tin can um, but I'm sure could other things I mean I Definitely not plastic, that wouldn't work. But so far I've done wood and I've done the, the tin, you know, the tin can. So those are a few examples. I don't know if anyone else has any ideas, but feel free to share in the chat. Okay, so you can see that I have the three pieces on and this is, can be a tricky part. Now, if you, based on the type of paper that you're using, if you have anything with like a print, you're gonna to wanna to just make sure it lines up nicely. So you wanna be mindful of that before you choose your paper and as you place it. So I am just looking and I have, it, my, it ends with a little flower here. So luckily I have the same flower on this end. So I'm just gonna line it up the best I can. And again, I'm gonna smooth it out. And for this, it's it's pretty simple. I'm just, I'm not, I don't have to measure or anything. I'm just gonna cut at the end. And then I can um, seal that up with my top coat after. But this actually lined up pretty well. Um, so that looks good. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. 
and um, you'll find that as you work this will dry a little bit so feel free to just grab your brush and you know put a little bit more on if you find that you don't have a good surface so again I'm just going right over the edge because this is also going to serve as my top layer so it's fine if you start to cover it as you are touching it up you find your Mod Podge is drying so um, here okay. and same thing this is dry to touch so um, I took too long to put it on so I'm just going to go ahead and apply some more I'm just again looking at my pattern just to make sure it'll transition well. Okay. So you can see I completely covered this side of the crate. What I'm going to do now is uh, just smooth it out. You really want to make sure there's no bubbles. What's nice about working with wood and, and trying to decoupage it is it's nice and flat. And the uh, Mod Podge really gets absorbed by the wood. So it's a pretty easy surface to work with. And this crate was nice and straight. So I'm not seeing any bubbles at all. So that's going to look really nice. Um, again, I'm going to take a paintbrush and completely cover the top. So it's okay. You don't have to be super neat with this. It's okay if you get a little bit of glue on the side. Um, it'll just dry. So it, it really doesn't matter. Um, so you could definitely do this with, you know, kids. They don't really mess it up at all. You can't really go wrong. Um, hey, I just covered the entire thing. So what you would do next is let it dry, put another coat on just so it's nice and secure. And then you could take your scissors, or if you have like a blade like I have, and um, you know, get any edges that are sticking out and kind of just trim it up. But overall, it looks really nice. If you want to do more of like a rustic look, you could use napkins, and um, you could even take some sandpaper after and kind of just you know make it look like it's a little bit older a little rustic so i've done that as well and it comes out really nice too uh, especially with the you know the wooden crates so as you see this if you start to see bubbles form that's when you would just want to again take your credit card or a, a tool similar to this and straighten it out so just watch that as it dries um and that's that project so now you can see I have two uh, matching sides. Now I, I did cover the other side of this. I'm going to do that later, but it's the same idea. Just take in your pieces, gluing it on, um, and doing whatever you would like with it. Now what's fun about decoupage is you can also use paint too to decorate and, and do other things. So when we do the jewelry holder next, I'm going to kind of show you some of those techniques to give it a finished look. I'm going to move these pieces out of my way. Here. Okay. So this project I'm pretty excited to show you. Um, the little jewelry holder. Um, you could also make this with keys, you know, a key holder, or I was even thinking today that I have a, you know, when I come into my garage, I always have coats just laying there. So I was thinking that I would really like to make a coat hanger too. So this would be the same idea. So as you organize your home a lot more recently 
and you're starting to see some of these things build up, this is a fun little organizing project and you can really do a lot with it. So let me show you how this is done. Um, so what I did for this project is I painted it first and then I touched it up later. So I am going to show you um, with this pretty paper that has a lot of yellow in it. I guess I've been really loving the color yellow lately. So um, hence my picture frame I showed you earlier and the two projects I'm going to show you now. I just feel like yellow is a really fun color for spring. Um, so let me go ahead and proceed forward. So what I'm going to do is um, show you how to paint first. But this is a piece of scrap wood I just found in my yard. Um, we have like a pile of scrap wood that my husband has left over from certain projects. So I went out and found all these. So it's quite possible you have something similar. So I did clean these before the program and I used sandpaper just to sand off the edges a little bit. So I did that step before this. And what I what I recommend is just go ahead and paint your your top and your bottom of your piece of wood or whatever you're using. And again, I'm just using this really nice yellow buttercream color that I think is just really bright and cheerful and nice. Um, but if you're doing this for, if you're making a jewelry holder and it's for your bedroom or your bathroom, maybe you want to think of colors that would go well. So, you know, when I did the other one, I did a white because all my, my furniture in my room is white. So that's why I chose that color. This one, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with yet. So I just figured I'd do a nice bright color. So to you more paint. Depending on the wood that you're using, you might have to do a few coats. When I did my first project, I used a really dark wood that I had. So I had to put on three or four coats in some areas. But you know, if you're using a light color wood then you probably just need one or two coats depending how you want it to look so again you can see i just went around and painted all the edges so i am going to wait for this to dry i did paint this one before so you can see i have the yellow all around And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the same idea that I did with the picture frame. And I'm just going to go ahead and trace the wood. So again, I'm going to trace it on the back of my paper. This method kind of eliminates your need to have a ruler. And I'm just edging it up to the bottom of my paper and the corner. So I only have to cut two edges. And I'm just using my pencil to trace. Okay. So you can see I kind of eliminated the need to trace all the corner, all the edges. So I do it on the corner. So it could be a little time saving trick. And then here's my paper. Really pretty. That's a lot of yellow and pinks and purples in it. So. Okay, and same idea that we've done throughout the program, uh, using a paintbrush to put a nice 
even layer on your wood. So now I'm beginning to think I could do bigger projects. So of course I would want to have a bigger paintbrush. Like say you want to do a dresser or a table. Um, I guess that's where I'm heading next. I would probably just want to get a bigger paintbrush and perhaps a bigger bottle of Mod Podge. So again, um, same thing, a nice thin layer, layer that you want it to cover the entire thing. Um, okay looking good and i'm going to use this tool and just make sure i have no bubbles i'm working my way from the middle to the edge and then i'm just going to flip it Looking really pretty. Um, give it a moment to dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my top layer on. Making sure to cover the entire piece. So okay, I do see a little bubble forming. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth it out. Okay, so again, um, you're going to let this dry and put a second coat on. I'm going to go against my own advice and I'm going to be showing you how to put the hooks in in just a moment, but I'm going to give it a second to go ahead and dry. And uh, you can see on this one, I put the hooks in. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that. Um, I'm using a really, really hard wood. Um, if you have pine, uh, you may be able just to push the hooks in, but I found this just to be a little too hard to do that. I'm not sure what kind of wood it is. It's, it was just out in a pile that I found, but um, it's definitely was too hard for me just to press the screws in. So I am going to use this drill here just to start my holes in just a moment. Okay, so now what you have to think about is um, like, what are you gonna do with this project and where do you want your hooks to be positioned? So for this one, I envisioned a set of necklaces, just like one necklace on each of these hooks. So I spaced it out that way. And I ended up putting five hooks on this. Um, I, what, what you wanna do is, you know, measure it with your tape measure. So I'm gonna show you this one. So this one here, this piece of wood, and your wood will be different. So you'll just have to be mindful of that, is nine and a half inches. So I am going to put a hook right in the middle. So that's gonna be four and three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark. And the height of this is six inches so i'm going to go three inches in the middle and then go right here so i'm going to make a mark right in the middle of my piece of wood i'm going to do over here okay and i'm using a pencil um 
so I can erase it if I need to. And then I, I'm going to opt to go one and a half inches in on each side, just so it's not like on the edge. So I kind of want it centered. So I'm doing one and a half inches here. And one and a half inches on this side. So I'm going at the eight inch mark. Okay. So I have my dots. There, I have a pattern paper, so they're actually a little hard to see, but I see them. Okay. And uh, my husband taught me a trick. Um, he recommends, so you don't drill your holes too deep. He recommended, and he wanted me to tell everyone this, um, and wanted credit. Uh, so take your hook and see how, how deep it's going to go into the wood. And then take a piece of tape. So I took a piece of washi tape, and I taped it up exactly um, the depth that I wanted it to go in. So really cool tip. Um, thanks to Brian, my husband. And I'm having this drill in my craft studio is really open up the possibilities of what I can do. So I'm excited for this. So I have a very small drill bit. I forgot to write down the size of it, but I can get it for you. Um, but it really is going to be based on the screws that you have. But it's very small. I think I can handle it. And I am just going to drill. into my holes. So, And it's really such a good tip because I would have no idea how long to go in. So again, super simple. Very happy you showed me that. Okay. And then I am just going to take my hooks and screw them in. So. And. We had to twist it like 10 times. So, now these are just screw hooks. They're called cup hooks. So, if you have to search for them online to order them, you want to look for cup hooks. And they're just little. I'm just screwing them in. I'm loving how this is looking. I'm very excited about this. Um, okay, this is this is really just adorable in my opinion. So um, there it is. Uh, you can, I'm going to put another layer of the Mod Podge on it. I didn't want you to have to watch me do that. Um, but it has a nice clean finish. Uh, you can really do so much with it. You can personalize it, you know, write someone's name or a quote. Uh, you can really just go crazy or it's just kind of perfect the way it is. Um, so there it is. So I can't wait to see what everybody does with some of these ideas. There's really the possibilities are endless. So I invite you to share them with us. Uh, we're using the hashtag MCPL at home. Um, you can also email me at gagliardiamber at mcplibrary.org. And does anyone have any questions be about any of our projects before? I say goodbye. Thanks. 
Okay, I don't believe there's any questions. So again, please share with us. Uh, decoupage, really, the possibilities are endless. It's so much fun. I'm finding I could really, you know, do a lot with it and add some color and decoration to my house. So I'm gonna continue to make additional projects. If you have any ideas, send them my way. And uh, thank you for joining us today.